They're talking about me on the telly. In breaking news, Playboy billionaire and owner of this network, Jet Newman, will be launching his latest project this evening, a variety-style talk show. The program will be broadcast live from the back of his own private jet above a mystery location, and it launches as we speak. News just to hand, alien spacecrafts have been spotted worldwide reeking Boring! Right, back to me. Well, we might have to start the show again. Oh, not the whole bloody thing, Terry. Terry's my producer. He thinks he runs the show. I run the show. Well, right now, it's time for a segment we hey, call... Hey, Jet, while you're at it, why don't you introduce our pilot? Oh, good idea. Now, I'd like you to meet the only other person on this aircraft. Because there's only three of us. You'll never see any other person on this plane, ever. I'd like you to meet the pilot of this jet, Captain Jack. Good afternoon, Jet Newman. G'day, Captain Jack. Now, where will you be taking us today? To the same place I always take you, Mr. Newman. To a mystery location. <laughs> Hey, Captain Jack, are you texting again? Um, yes I am. How did you know that? Cause we're six feet off the ground. Oh shit! Hey, Captain Jack, why didn't the onboard computer pick up on that mistake? Yeah, sorry. I was texting as well. Let me introduce myself. My name is Rex. I am the onboard computer and autopilot. I can help you with anything you need. Well then I'll have a bourbon on the rocks, thanks Rex. I meant help with information. I am not your fucking robot slave. Hey Jet, sorry to interrupt your intellectual banter, but your first interview is waiting via satellite. Alright, oh, right. Well right now we're crossing live via satellite to the year 1987, where our special guest is waiting. Voted by Russian hackers as the man most likely to be president, Please welcome, 1987, Donald Trump! G'day, Trumpy. Now you should be honoured because you're our very first guest. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Now firstly, this may come as a shock to you, but in 30 years time, you will be the 45th President of the United States. I have no intention of running for President. What? Well, we'd all appreciate it if you didn't, but the fact is, you are now the President. I'm not particularly looking to do it. Well, what about the people who actually voted for you? What would they say? Maybe they'd say, hey, you know what? We're making a mistake. Well, we've already been down that road. This country is going to have some very, very serious problem in the early 1990s. 1990s? Just wait till you're president. It's going to be a very difficult presidency because of the problems that we're talking about right now. You mean you being president? Well, what do you think America needs in their president? Well, what we need is competence. ba boom well, if you're not going to be president, Mr. President, where do you see yourself in 30 years? Don't you want to be at the top? I think it's a very good question, and that's really pretty much where I want to be. Now, think carefully about it. This is a big deal. Will you go for president in 30 years? It's turned out to be now a much bigger deal than mm. I had ever anticipated, and perhaps uh, I will go, yes. Oh, crap. Uh, look, when you win... I'd really appreciate it if you didn't tell anyone I talked you into it. Well, I think we have a real good chance. I already told you, you won! Look, the fact is you are the president right now. So, looking forward, what kind of legacy do you want to leave the world after your presidency to end? I think the next president of the United States could have some very, very, very serious problems. Donald Trump, thanks for a great interview. 
which has been a total disaster. Well, you can't argue with that. Now, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Back to Rex, the onboard computer, for a second. Yes, Jet. I assume you have a difficult question for me that everyone else in the room already knows the answer to. Well, yes, I do, smartass. What does Rex stand for? Rex is short for really expensive. That's right. Some idiot paid a lot of money for me. Oh, hang on. I believe that was you, Jet. And I can also pay for you to be dismantled, you little bastard. Understood, sir. Good. Well, right now it's time for a segment we call Big Bucks. Terry, you're supposed to flash the Big Bucks intro on the screen. Sorry, the button's not working. Ah, that's okay. That's fine. Look, it's our first show. We've got a few bugs to work out. Did you say you need some bugs? Who said that? Down here. A oh, shit. If you need some bugs to work out on your show, I run a fitness class at my local gym and I could get a few of the guys to come and do an exercise demonstration for you if you'd like. For a small fee, of course. No, I meant we've got some stuff to work out. How about some ladybugs? They could do an erotic dance for you. This seems to be that type of show. Look, I don't want any ladybugs. I don't want any fitness bugs. In fact, I do not want bugs on this show. You and I have nothing to say to each other. And we're back in three, two, and... Hey, Terry, I just found out this is the pilot episode. Yeah, that means it's the first one. Oh, is that all it is? And we're back. Right, now it's time for a segment we call Big Bucks. Big Bucks. Hang on, hang on, hold up, hold up. Terry, why the fuck are there deer in the picture? What the hell does that have to do with money? They're bucks, Jet. A male deer is called a buck. Jesus Christ, Terry. Uh, look, let me tell you something about Terry. He used to work in advertising, but he got the sack for failing to understand the product. Isn't that right, Terry? Remember that, Terry? Remember when you got the sack? You're facing the wrong camera, Terry. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope the television commercial that we've created is exactly what you're after. Let's take a look. Redheads, they're taking over. Whether they're world leaders, actors, performers, wizards, heroes, or clowns, redheads are a driving force. And what's driving them is the new model Ford made exclusively for those with a flair for red hair. Redheads, your car has arrived. The Ford Ranger. Stand even more out of the crowd. Well, there it is. What do you think? You know it's pronounced Ranger. Oh, fuck. And now here's a segment we call Big Bucks. Big Bucks. Now this is where I showcase a new product that's going to make me my next million dollars. Now I didn't get rich just from owning one company, I own many companies. In fact I used to work in the music industry. You might remember me as the creator of the world's first overweight boy band, BLT. I also produced their number one selling worldwide album, Smells Like Tin Syrup. You know those guys never performed without a support holding up the stage. They were once the biggest band in the world by about 80 kilos. And you know, their music will live on forever. Which is great, because you know their life expectancy isn't as great as some of those more healthier boy bands. Now my money making idea this week is to work with McDonald's to bring back their old children's characters of the 80s. You might remember the Hamburglar and Mayor McCheese? Well, my character is a Negro pimp that sells drugs to kids, and I'm calling him Hash Brown. And while I'm on the subject for making money, my new shopping centre opens today, Jet City, 
Hey Terry, have you seen the ad for Jet City? No. I'll show you. Here's the new TV commercial. There's a chemist there. They could cut your hair. It's a simple case of getting all your shopping done all in the one place. There's a news agent there. You can buy a lot of tickets. Come and shop at Jet City. That's fantastic. What a great commercial. You know, I've always loved Mick Jagger. David Bowie. What? It's David Bowie in the commercial. All oh, right. Well, I always get my Beatles mixed up. Right. Now, one of the big stories of the week is, uh... Oh, sorry. Sorry. One of the big stories... Uh... <laughs> One of the... What the fuck is that? It's okay, base. I've just identified the owner of the mystery jet. It belongs to Playboy billionaire Jet Newman. Roger. We'll give him some airspace, Scout One. Did he just call you Roger? I thought your name was Mark. No, Roger means you received my last transmission. You should know that. It's the first thing you learn at flight school. Well, don't get cranky. I've just never heard of that. You've never heard of that? Well, what if I said to him, Roger Wilco? Do you know what that means? Well, obviously that means you received his last transmission. And his name is Wilco. It means we'll comply. Are you telling me you don't know any aircraft terms? Yeah, I know Goose. What's Goose? He flies with Maverick. Oh, jeez. We've got another three reconnaissance missions to fly today, not to mention the military escort next week. So I need to train you up before someone finds out about this. Now, what do you know about communications? Can you change frequencies? Yes, I can. Ah, can you tell me what Whiskey Tango Foxtrot is? Well, it's a dance and, uh... May Day? A public holiday in May. What about ATC? Automatic Teller Cashier? It's air traffic control. Zulu? Great movie with Michael Caine. Well, we're screwed. Both of us are going to lose our pilot's license for this. Well, I can't lose mine. I don't have one. What? Well, how did you become a pilot? Oh, I'm not a pilot. My family gave me this joy flight for my birthday. This is Scout One returning to base for a quiet word about mission briefings. I couldn't hear a word they were saying. Well, that's it for our first show. Thanks for joining us. Now fuck off.